Hey everybody, this video includes practice problems worked out for uh, situations involving conservation of energy for both conservative systems and non-conservative systems. So let's get started uh, with the strategy. So um, whenever objects are changing height or are pushed by a spring or electric force, we can use conservation of energy. Um, so uh, whenever we're dealing with conservation of energy, we want to identify our initial kinetic and initial potential energies. Possibly we might have to calculate them. Identify any final kinetic and final potential energies. Possibly you have to calculate them. Some of them might be unknown. And if we have non-conservative forces doing work, we need to find the work done by the non-conservative forces. Then we're going to use conservation of energy to find our unknowns, our speeds, our heights, our forces, etc. Remember, conservation of energy, our general equation is energy initial plus our non-conservative work is equal to energy final. And if we're just dealing with potential and kinetic energy, that would be U initial plus K initial plus non-conservative work equals U final plus K final. So let's take a look at this problem. This is an example of a swinging pendulum with no friction. Um, the pendulum swings back and forth, back and forth, and gravity is the only force doing work. There is also tension. Whoa. There is also tension. I don't know how I zoomed in there. How do we? There is also tension acting. Mg pulls down. Tension pulls along the direction of the string, but it's always perpendicular to the motion, so it does no work. So it is a conservative system, which means energy is going to be conserved. At its maximum height, it has 10 joules of uh, potential energy and zero of kinetic, which means the total mechanical energy, I'm going to call it TME, is 10 joules. And that's going to stay constant the whole time. So if we have 10 joules total, uh, at this point we have 5 joules of potential, which means we have kinetic energy is just 5 joules. At its lowest point, it is at zero potential energy, which means all of that energy has to be kinetic, so the kinetic energy is 10 joules. And at this point, this is the same height that it originally was, so since it's the same height, it's the same potential energy, which is 10 joules, and the kinetic energy is, is going to be zero joules because there's no energy left over for kinetic. It's going to be at its maximum height. Here's another example. We have a frictionless slope, an object sliding down. It starts from rest at the top, and we know that because the kinetic energy is zero at the top. Um, at the bottom, we know the potential energy is zero, and there are 75 joules of kinetic energy, which means there's 75 joules total. So at this point, if we have 75 joules total and 50 are kinetic, then that means there are I don't know why this keeps happening. Um, there are going to be 25 joules of potential energy. Up here, we have 50 joules of potential. So that means we have 25 joules of kinetic, because it adds up to 75. And at the very top, it's all potential, which means it has to be 75 joules of potential, zero kinetic. And this is pretty much the strategy we use to solve energy problems. Uh, when we have these energies, and if we know the mass, we can use that to find speeds and height as well. That's what we're going to do in this problem. Okay, so in this problem, we have a 2,500 kilogram roller coaster train passing over the top of a 100 meter first hill at A at 2.0 meters per second. Find its speed at the top of the second hill, C. Drag is negligible and the train is bound to the track. We're also going to add that friction is negligible. So if friction is negligible, that means it's going to be a conservative system. And we can figure that out by looking at a free body diagram for the, car, the train at any point along the track. Gravity pulls down. And the only other force is the normal force. There are two forces acting, but the normal force is never going to do work because it's always perpendicular to the motion. Gravity is the only force doing work. Since it's a conservative force, this is a conservative system, and energy is going to be conserved. So we can solve this using conservation of energy. Energy initial equals energy final, because there's no non-conservative work. We could also say 
kinetic energy initial, and I'm going to say kinetic energy at A, plus potential energy at A, equals kinetic energy at, in this case, C, plus potential energy at C. So let's start by sorting out some of the energies. At A, we know the height and we know the mass. So we can find the potential energy at A using mg height of A. Mass is 2,500 kilograms. G is 9.81 meters per second squared. And the height is 100 meters. If we plug that into a calculator, we get 100 times 9.81 times 2,500, we get 2.45 times 10 to the 6 joules. And we can also find the kinetic energy at A because we know the speed. It's 1 half mv squared. So that's 1 half times 2,500 kilograms times 2.0 meters per second, that whole thing squared. Plug that into a calculator. We get 5.0 times 10 to the 3 joules. Okay, um, so there's everything we know about A. Uh, we know this, we know this. If we want to find the speed at the top of C, we're really looking for kinetic energy, so we're going to need the potential energy at C. But we can get the potential energy at C. It's just mgh at C. 2,500 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared times 38 meters, because it's 38 meters high, equals 9.32 times 10 to the 5 joules. And so that just leaves our unknown kinetic energy at C. But we already have an equation for that. Um, so let's plug into the equation. We're just really balancing the energies at A and the energies at C. Kinetic energy at A, 2.45 times 10 to the 6 joules, plus potential energy at A. Actually, that was potential energy at A. Let's add the kinetic energy at A before it, 5.0 times 10 to the 3 joules equals kinetic energy at C plus the potential energy at C, which is 9.32 times 10 to the 5 joules. If I solve for the kinetic energy and add the left side together, I get I get 2.46 times 10 to the 6 joules. And if I subtract off this term from both sides, the 9.32, I've solved for kinetic energy. 9.32 times 10 to the 5 joules gives me my kinetic energy at C. So my kinetic energy at C is then just equal to One point five two times ten to the six. One point five two times ten to the six joules. And that gives us our kinetic energy. So we have all the energies to find the speed. We can just use the formula for kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is one half m v squared. If we solve for k, multiply by two, divide by m. We get v squared equals 2k over m. We take the square root of both sides to get v equals the square root of 2k over m. Plug in our numbers. Square root of 2 times 1.52 times 10 to the 6 joules over the mass 2,500 kilograms. Plug it into a calculator. we get a speed of 34.9 meters per second, or to two sig figs, 35 meters per second. 
That's quite fast. Um, that's something like uh, 80 miles an hour. Um, but this is an unrealistic problem because there is no drag or no friction. Um, so let's move on to a similar problem. The same 2,500 kilogram roller coaster train passes over the top of the 100 meter first hill at the same initial speed. Find its speed at the top of the second hill C. So it's really the same problem. However, there is 210 meters of track between A and B. Whoops, that should say A and C. And the average frictional force is 5.0 times 10 to the 3 newtons. So we know the length of track from here to here is 210 meters. We're also given this frictional force. So since friction is acting, we know that we have non-conservative work. This is not a conservative system. So we have to use our full conservation of energy. Initial energy plus non-conservative work is equal to final energy. Another way we could write that is kinetic energy at A plus potential energy at A plus non-conservative work is equal to kinetic energy at C plus potential energy at C. Now, in the previous problem, we already solved for the kinetic energy at A. We solved for the potential energy at A. And we solved for the potential energy at C. And I've written them all right here. So if we want to find our speed, we need the kinetic energy at C. We'll need to find this non-conservative work here. So we've accounted for three out of the five terms, we need four out of the five in order to solve for the last one. So we know that work done by friction is going to be force times distance times cos theta. We're given the average force, 5.0 times 10 to the 3 newtons. And we're given the distance that friction is acting over, 210 meters. We also know that friction is always acting against the direction of motion, so that means it's going to be negative work, and that's accounted for in the cosine of 180 degrees. I'm just going to put a negative sign out front. So we can find that non-conservative work. It's going to be 5.0 times 10 to the 3 times 210. 1.05 times 10 to the 6 joules. of work. That's non-conservative work. That's work done by friction. Gravity does do work, but remember it's conservative, so it doesn't affect the energy. So once we have that, we can actually just plug into our equation over here and solve. I'm going to move this equation up to here. Our kinetic energy at A is 5.0 times 10 to the 3 joules. Our potential energy at A is 2.45 times 10 to the 6 joules. I'm run out of space. Our non-conservative work is our next term, and that's 1.0 well, plus a negative, plus negative 1.05 times 10 to the 6 joules. And that's equal to our kinetic energy at C plus our potential energy at C, which is um, 9.32 times 10 Okay, so I'm going to add up the left side, or the top side, using a calculator. 5.0 plus 3 plus 2.45 times 10 to the 6 plus negative 1.05 times 10 to the 6. My left side becomes 1.405 times 10 to the 6. My right side is just kinetic energy at C plus... 9.32 times 10 to the 5 joules. And this is my potential energy at C. So I subtract off that 9.32 times 10 to the 5 from each side. To solve for my kinetic energy. Let's see. Um... 
Plug that into a calculator, minus 9.32 times 10 to the 5. I get 4.73 times 10 to the 5 joules of energy. So that gives me the energy at C, and that's accounting for the fact that I lost a bunch of energy due to friction. Now the last bit is to solve for the speed. Um, find the speed at the top of that second. No. Well, we already solved the equation for speed from kinetic energy, and it ended up being V equals square root of 2 kinetic energy over M. I'm just going to plug into that. Square root of 2 times 4.73 times 10 to the 5 joules over 2,500 joules, not joules, um, kilograms. Plug that into a calculator. 2 times answer divided by 2,500. Take the square root. I get 19 meters per second. My velocity at sea. And that's a lot more reasonable. That's it's still fast. It's still about 40 miles an hour, maybe 50. But it's much more reasonable we're, we're, because we're losing a lot of energy as we go down this um, hill. Anyway, uh, this is how we're going to use conservation of energy to solve problems. To recap, we account for all the energies. We account for the non-conservative work. We find our unknown energies. And we use that unknown energy to solve for whatever else we need to solve. That's all. I hope that was helpful. Bye.